What's up, guys? Welcome back to Minecraft Therapy. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today, I want to talk to y'all about how to fix Stanford. Let's fix Stanford, because Stanford has a bunch of fucking problems, and uh, having gone through a lot of those problems myself, I feel like I have some ideas about how to fix them. Oh my god. Haha, <laughs> good thing I didn't die there. But... <laughs> I seem to have a problem with dying at the beginning of these videos. Anyway, yeah, the Stanford videos ugh, seem to do well, and y'all seem to like them, so I want to talk about how to fix Stanford. Um, yeah, let's just re get right into it. I'll sort of describe the problems as I describe the fixes. First problem we got to fix is, first of all, we got to fix housing. Stanford housing it sucks for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off... Stanford's campus is so big that, like, it's hard. You're basically friends with the people you live around. But, uh, obviously that's, like, highly variant, right? It's, you might live with some bad people. You might live with some good people. It's, like, uh, a roll of the dice, basically, where you live. And... The draw sucks, so if you don't go to Stanford, the draw is basically Stanford's way of assigning you a place to live after your freshman year. Basically, uh, you get a random number from 1 to 3,000. All the students just get a random number, and based on where that number is, you get, you get to pick your house either first choice or last choice. So if you get a good number, it's great, because then you get to live where you want. If you get a bad number, uh, you're shit out of luck. Yeah, that's not great. Another thing I have, problem I have with the draw is that it happens every year. So that, I don't know, like maybe you find a really good dorm and you have a really good community and a good bunch of friends there. Well, guess what? Next year, you can draw in groups with your friends, but you, it is, uh, you can't draw in groups more than like, four or something so if you have a lot of friends like in a certain place guess what uh, a lot of you guys are probably getting split up the next year when you guys go to different uh dorms so the first solution thing we got to do is fucking fix housing and guess what you're welcome stanford i got a fucking solution for you so this is probably a terrible idea and won't work for a bunch of reasons but Here's my idea for how to fix housing. And actually, Stanford realizes that housing sucks because they started coming out with a plan to fix it. Uh, I haven't really read about the details of it since I graduated, but before the whole COVID situation happened, they were planning on doing something called um, neighborhoods, I think. So instead of a draw, they were going to like change housing to like be with neighborhoods, whatever that means, and like people are going to live in like just just basically we're going to rearrange the housing system. But here's here's my fucking solution to fix that shit. First of all, you put all the freshmen in Wilbur, Stern, and Crothers. Now, right now, the way freshman housing works is that the freshmen are all spread out, and you can live in a bunch of different places if you're a freshman. You can live uh, on West Campus or East Campus, and that is, like, really... Those places are really far away, so you can live in Norcliffe and be, like, you know be there or you can live in wilbur or you can live in stern or you can live in robley all these places are really far apart and i feel like it fractures the freshman community so the first solution i have for you stanford is put all the fucking freshmen in stern wilbur and crothers and i feel like that will uh at the very least like just make make it easier for freshmen to meet other freshmen because if say you live uh, in Robley on West Campus. It's going to be hard for you to meet people who aren't on West Campus. It's going to be hard for you to meet someone who lives in, like, Stern, for example. Um, I feel like part of, I don't know, freshman year, you should just meet as many people as possible and, like, find friends and, like, not... just You should just meet as many people as possible. So freshman year, put all the freshmen in those dorms. Uh, maybe set up, like, I don't know, some some mingling events there. I don't know. Figure it out, put all of them freshmen there, have them do freshman stuff there, and then what you want to do, my solution, uh, I feel like my solution is similar to Harvard's way of doing it. So Harvard, what they do at Harvard is after your freshman year, 
you sort of tour around all of these different dorms and then you pick the one that like best suits your like uh personality and like where you want to live and then you apply to a couple of them and then you uh, pick a dorm and then that's where you live for the next three years it's kind of like i guess like kind of like rushing for like a dorm but like hopefully less stressful than that i feel like stanford should adopt something similar to that where you pick a place to live maybe you go all the you have like a bunch of different dorms that all have like different quirks different personalities and then you pick a place and you live there for the next three years uh, i feel like this can be beneficial in two ways first of all um it helps establish like what type of dorm each place is because of a draw and like the fact that new people are always going into like oh my god new people are always going into uh new dorms and like the people in there are constantly changing the like culture and like uh feel of a dorm can change a lot from year to year i feel like that's not good a dorm i don't know because that can it then you're like not really sure what you're getting into like say you want to live in mars well mars this year might be different than mars last year because the people there are going to be different versus if people choose to go into mars because they know that mars is oh this type of person lives in mars uh and this and the people who live in mars thir- 60 was it 33 percent of them will be the same the juniors or no 66 percent of them will be the same since the seniors will leave but the sophomores and juniors will stay you can sort of know what you're getting into versus if you apply to go to mars live in mars right now the way you, it's done if you tr- apply to live in mars you might not know um what you're getting into next year because the people will be totally different so there's that there's that first thing and then second of all i feel like that'll lead to greater community in dorms right now i feel like it's hard to I feel like it's hard to switch dorms like um every year because then you have to like rebuild up that community like say you lived you lived in um i don't know Norcliffe, your junior year, and you built a really good community, made a lot of friends. It's sick. Well, guess what? Now you're not going to live there next year, and you're going to have to start all over and, like, make friends again. Not that, uh, you know, making friends is a bad thing or whatever, but, like, um, that just is a lot of work versus I feel like, you know, if you have something good going on, all right, let's continue to build on that. Let's continue to build on these friendships. So that's what having people stay in the same dorm uh, for sophomore, junior, and senior year would do. You know, people will be able to build on those friendships and and get really strong friendships. Versus freshman year, that's your time to, like, explore, meet people, and stuff. And, of course, you know, you can meet people outside your dorm, but... I feel like a dorm should have a strong community and at Stanford dorms really don't have strong communities because it changes so much from year to year. So that's my first thing we got to fix at Stanford. Let's fix the housing. All right. Number two, let's get rid of all the dumb ass requirements. Why are there so many dumb requirements for so many dumb things? For example, for my CS major in the school of engineering, you have to take one science elective. And the science elective I took was geology. Intro to geology. Geology 1. What the fuck does geology have to do with CS? I'm probably literally going to never have to use my knowledge about igneous rocks ever in CS. And there's just other examples about, like, random useless things like that. I think ways, the ways requirement. So ways requirement is basically, like, different types of classes you have to take. There's, like uh a diversity requirement a like thinking or uh you know a, an analytical thinking requirement yada yada it's basically to encourage like you know engineering people to take humanities classes humanities people to take engineering classes but i feel like some of the requirements are outdated like the geology one that's not a ways requirement but like when i had that one i was like really like really and there were a few ways requirements where i was like really like i had to take I took um, history of South Africa and history of modern China. 
Actually, both of those classes were really good classes, but I took them to fulfill two different ways requirements, even though, like, I feel like, you know, they're both history classes. They both, like, sort of accomplished the same goal they're trying to get me to, like, expand my horizons to. I expanded it to history, so why do I have to take two history classes? Um, so, yeah, I would say right now you have to take eight ways major, eight ways requirements. I actually feel like that's not that many but maybe like just expand the number of different classes that count for ways because right now i do feel like for some ways there are a limited number of classes that you can take for them i think yeah sometimes you'll like look up classes that like fill the engaging diversity requirement and there'll only be like a few classes there and none of them are really interesting to you but you're like i guess i gotta take one so let me just pick one i feel like there's probably Maybe just every class at Stanford should count for ways requirements. Some classes... Actually, I think every class does count for a ways requirement. But, I don't know. So, somehow expanding... Expanding classes that count for ways requirements and getting rid of dumb requirements. Like the fucking... <laughs> Basically, I'm saying the School of Engineering should have less dumb requirements. They should not have made me... I can't believe I wasted like units taking geology and like other classes that really didn't matter um kind of yeah kind of sucks but yeah less dumb requirements so there's that and then i also think stanford you gotta just let this so less dumb requirements that's number two number three let stanford be fun again make stanford fun again uh, i feel like recently the administration has been cracking down on fun things at Stanford. I believe this is because um, they're trying to reduce um, harassment and other bad things. Of course, we want to reduce those things as much as possible. Um, you know, we don't need... I'm not saying we should do unnecessarily dangerous or, or unscrupulous things, but... I do think Stanford has perhaps come down too hard on the other side where things are just like not weird or like fun at Stanford anymore. I feel like part of what makes college fun is like weird, random traditions that like perhaps like are a little transgressive and like maybe wouldn't happen in the real world. But this is college and like we can have fun here. This is the time if there was any to like do weird random shit. So for what examples am I talking about? Um, bring back full moon on the quad and make it fun again. Full moon on the quad. I think, I think the year I got there was actually the year full moon on the quad started to suck, but I think full moon on the quad used to be a lot more fun or something or, or something like that. It, it was basically like, um, right now full moon on the quad, like there's no alcohol allowed, there's police there, like, watch, keeping a hawk's eye on everyone. It's, like, kind of weird, and it's not, and, and the kissing part of it doesn't happen anymore, which, I don't know, that's, what's the point, then, if we're just gonna stand around and, like, basically just have, like, a sleepover party where mom is always watching, you know, I don't know. Other things, I think there used to be a party on, like, Lake Log, um, uh, like, every year but then they that have shut down that might have shut down like in the 80s or something so i don't know but like i don't know the general vibe i get at stanford is like things are not wacky and quirky and weird like they used to be because the administration has come down really hard on like fun things i don't know i could be totally wrong on that and they, maybe they have a total justification for doing that but i feel like part of a college experience is like weird random things that are not supposed to happen within the realm of, like, you know, not harassing anyone or anything like that, of course. But, like, I don't know. I feel like Stanford is just, like, not weird anymore. Make Stanford weird again is what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the the weirdest slash... The, the only Stanford traditions I can think of are, like, mid, are primal scream, where everyone, I don't know, like, people... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Primal scream, where... um people scream out their windows finals week which is like i don't know that's not that interesting actually 
And I don't know, there's midnight breakfast, which is also like not really weird or funky. You just eat breakfast at midnight, which is like fine. But yeah, I feel like Stanford, come on, we got to bring the weird shit back. Um, make Stanford fucking weird again. Let's go. All right. I got one more for you guys. So number three. Just let Stanford be fun. Come on. Like, we don't have to shut down everything and, like, sanitize everything. College is supposed to be a weird, wacky time. Let Stanford be fun. That's number three. And number four. This one is less on the administration, more on the kids. Uh, Come on. Students got to be more mature. I don't know what it is about Stanford. I've I've said this in a previous video, but I feel like Stanford is quite... um, they, they, uh, you're, you're babied at Stanford, basically. And a lot of that personal growth that people normally experience when they become adults, Stanford students don't have, uh, Stanford students don't experience. And they're immature. And I don't know, that kind of sucks because then you're around a bunch of immature people and you're not experiencing a lot of personal growth yourself. So I think, I don't know, the onus is kind of on students on this one. Like, do a job, get a job that's, like, hard. Stop uh, (laughs) complaining about everything. Stop being, like, immature. I don't really know. Maybe this is me just hating on students. But, like, I feel like the whole Sanford experience could be better if students just, I don't know, took some responsibility for random things, like acted more mature, didn't always complain about everything and like realize there's a world outside of Stanford and not all your complaints about politics and things. Other people have to worry about making ends meet and they don't have the time to worry about your random political bullshit. I don't know. That's a controversial opinion, I guess, but I'm not trying to say people's political opinions don't matter, but at Stanford, I feel like that's the only thing people are thinking about they're not thinking about cleaning up after themselves when they go to the bathroom literally like things like that stanford kids are not thinking about which is like you uh being around when you when you're at college you want to be around mature people so that you can grow yourself personally and not always the case at stanford so come on stanford kids go step our game up step your game up I'm not a Stanford kid anymore, so fuck that, thank God. But yeah, number four, Stanford kids, just take responsibility for things. I don't know, be more mature. Maybe this is me sounding like a boomer, like, oh, Stanford kids, back in my day, we were all mature, and now y'all don't take responsibility for anything. But I don't know. I feel like people would generally agree with me that Stanford kids generally are more sheltered and privileged than people who don't get to go to college i don't think that's a controversial opinion so i think stanford kids have a bit of learning to do in the real world i don't know exactly how the best way for them to do that is but i would hope that at least students actively try to expand their horizons beyond the first world problems that they experience at stanford so yep those are the four that i have for today i and probably think of 10 million more, but those are just four. Um, yeah, let's just recap. One, fix housing. Put the freshmen in the shitty dorms and have everyone else live in other dorms for three years so that they can build strong community. And of course, some dorms will be more desirable than others, but I don't know. That's just life. Uh, there will always be dorms that are more desirable than others. Uh, number two, less dumb requirements. Stop making me take geology for CS. That makes no sense. Uh, make more classes available for ways and easier to fulfill the ways requirements. Uh, number three, let Stanford be fun. Y'all, administration really sucking the joy out of being a college student. We don't need police and admins always looking down our necks like hawks and like shutting down anything that's like remotely fun slash inappropriate like part of what makes college fun is like the inappropriate shit so like i don't know and that's also where you can like grow personally i feel like when you make when you do dumb mistakes so come on just let stanford be fun let people fuck up and make mistakes (laughs) finally stanford students got to be more mature got to realize there's a world outside of stanford 
uh, your PSET pro your PSET and your Stanford problems are not the problems that most people have to face. And there's a lot worse shit happening in the world. So just fucking please flush the fucking toilets when you're at Stanford. That's all I'm trying to say. Men's bathroom. Y'all got to flush the toilets, which y'all never do. But come on, step your game up. Uh, yeah, those are four. I really did nothing in Minecraft today besides hop around because I didn't have any food. So I know I'm going to get roasted for that. But whatever. Y'all don't even watch the Minecraft gameplay anyway. Y'all just want to hear me talk about Stanford. So yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if y'all like this video. Like, subscribe, all that good shit. Stanford videos seem to get the views. Y'all seem to don't give a shit about anything else I have to say. Uh, so I'll probably churn out some more of these. I'm just kidding, by the way. Just playing. Uh, I enjoy making the Stanford videos. Getting to share my advice. So, yeah. Hope everyone is... Wow, I was talking really fast today. Probably because I wanted to jam this into, like, one episode and not a 30-minute episode. But, yeah. Damn. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, hope everyone's staying safe. Hope everyone's doing well. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay sane. Peace.